Hound Dog Gadgets. Live! Hi there. I'm, I'm Josh from Brown Dog Gadgets. You are. Uh, I'm making sure my microphone is on. Microphone uh, on. It is. It's not on mute. It'll be flashing <laughs> at me otherwise. Thanks, microphone. Look at you all microphone Got it. So, hey, it's Thursday, I'm told. Yeah. We're here once again talking about the new version 2 microbit just came uh it didn't come out yet it's been announced uh, on tuesday for the microbit foundation uh this cool little microcontroller is used by millions of kids around the u.s canada great britain australia new zealand basically all over the world the world the world literally around the world unless the world is round pete unless of course it's all across the flat earth but wow. we're not those people no uh so it's pretty cool and the new version has a c- bunch of fun new features on it yay uh, after five years of being out, they did some updates, including a built-in piezo speaker. Look at that micro bit. Micro Look at that. That's a new Pete. When we talk about the wow, micro bit. Pete, you're so cool. Um, okay, piezo speaker is built into the new one. Um, it has a microphone sensor, which we talked about heavily yesterday, and the piezo speaker the day before. And also has another cool feature, built-in capacitive touch, because they upgraded the processor on here, so now it has capacitive touch capability. What is capacitive touch? You're asking. What is that? Uh, So capacitive touch is a thing that makes all your cell phones and other fun touch devices work. Uh, Essentially, you have a bunch of different uh, data points on like a screen, like an iPad or phone screen. And it says, hey, when I turn on, I have this much capacitance in there. This much electrical energy is at this point. Now, when your body touches the point, we add a lot more electrical energy to it. A higher amount of capacitance can be held because our body is mostly water. So it sees a state of change saying, hey, it's I'm being touched. It's really a fancy way to press a button without really pressing a button, um, which is, you know, it's super fancy. It's on all of our devices. So having built-in capacitive touch on this guy, even though it's one, two, three, possibly four points, is really kind of cool. You see that on higher end, like our Duinos, um, Teensy Duinos, and some other microcontrollers as well. It's just a really fancy way of doing things. We use that actually for our our sound wall, which is behind me here, because oh, we're wow. live streaming in a hallway this week and part of next week yeah. as our new office area gets done. Well, let's you do some really interesting projects and not doing the old the old hat way of you have to hold on to ground with one hand and then touch things. That's resistive touch. That's resistive yeah. touch? It's not... It's okay. That's... <laughs> it's not as good. Pete, you know what that is? It's so 2013. It's... Wow. It really is. 2013. Right. Right. Uh, capacitive touch is much uh, higher tech, but equally easy to implement. Yeah. Uh, and this has it in there. Now, the cool thing is a while ago, Pete over here, good old Pete, took microbit version 1.5, the old version, and used the resistive touch to make a kind of fake capacitive touch. Um, so we're going to show you how to do that as well. So if you have an older microbit, you can still do some sort of capacitive touch option on there. But we're going to show you how to do both. <coughs> but first and foremost, if you like what you see here today, please follow us on one of these many social media links or at browndoggadgets.com. And if you really, really, really like what's showing off, we're still, ah, uh, we got one. Uh, here we go. We're still doing our Kickstarter campaign for our Crazy Circuits Bitboard, uh, which if you like Lego and Microbit, that's how you combine the two of them together in a really uh, wonderful marriage of plastic and PCBs and Beats conductive a tape. a breadboard with the tiny wires. And... Bingo, plus yeah. Lego. Yeah. Um, it's on Kickstarter right now for the next seven days. You can save up to 40%. It's also on our website as well, browndowgadgets.com, with the same discounts. And we will be shipping all of our pledge levels with uh, Microbit version 2. Good yeah. old, you can tell number 2 because it has little notches on the bottom uh, for alligator clips. Do, do, and do, do, and do. the color, the copper logo. Copper logo and, and it's matte versus shiny. Speaker on the back. A, uh, and it says V2. Josh, we got a comment. Oh Do you God. know Jim over here from Calculus Roundtable? No, but so, I imagine, hey guys, so, I imagine yeah. you could calculate how round that table yeah. is to several <laughs> degrees <laughs> of pi. Ooh, I bet Jim knows pi up to like 20, de- that's, 20 that's points, don't you, Jim? If, if we pressed you like in a quiz show, be like, Jim, 20 decibels pi. Jim's like, I got this. I've been training right. for years. Right, but anyway, yeah. so our bit board is totally on Kickstarter and our website. I'm going to stop talking about it. But we're going to be using that here in our demo. So we're going to switch to the above view. Overhead. Little Josh in the corner. Yeah. Uh, so we've got this board here. Uh, Pete put together. I'm going to turn it around so it's facing me. There we go. So this is a very, very, very basic setup uh, with our, our Crazy Circuits bit board, just so we can do it on Lego, have a bit area, bigger area. Now what we're doing is breaking out the pin from our micro bit. This is V2 right here. And we're coming out from there from one of the pins, pins 0, 1, and 2, which are the ones you would use on the micro bit 0, 1, 2. Mm-hmm. And we're coming out with our maker tape, our nylon conductive awesome tape. 
Uh, copper foil, no, 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 sir. We don't quick, do that. Quick update from Tim. Jim, points. if you can do 123 <laughs> points, we will buy you a beverage of your choice. Yeah. You better not cheat, because we will hold you to it, Jim. All right. Literally, we'll hold you to it. And you could just rattle off numbers we wouldn't know. Um, I got like five. Anyway, right. so we just broke it out down here to a couple of like little tape areas. Yeah. Ta-da. So we're going to plug this guy in and show you what we're doing and how this capacitor touch works. So we're just plugging in a little battery pack here to keep things easy. Our micro bit turns on. We got here. We got a little happy face. Hey, Pete, would you uh, would you ditch one of the lights up here? Maybe a little bit here. A little better, right? That's see, better. See it better. There we go. We're we're in a hallway this week. So Pete's up a very simple set of code where you touch any of these points and it changes the graphic on the front using the built-in micro bit graphics. So we're just gonna do this. We're gonna touch. Yeah, that's that's your smiley, I think. Oh, that's... Not, try another one. All right. A little skull for a Halloween. skull. And so we just touch right here, you know, heart. Hearts. And back to Smiley. Right. Logo too. Now, yeah, I was going to get to that, Pete. <laughs> so they also made a fourth capacitive touch point yeah. built in with their logo here because it's just exposed copper. So you can touch that and it's going to, oh, look at that. It's doing There's a funky little thing. little animation there. You know? Little animation. That one, you got to you kind of press well on that logo one I found. Let's go back again. harder to press. There you go. So capacitor touch, basically it's a button without having to connect a ground. Yeah. We use conductive tape. Like we have some chrome plated Legos we got from, mm. um, oh my gosh, uh, I'm totally blanking on the name down in Chicago. Uh, Lego Metals Inc. Shoot, no, but they're, chrome oh my brick. gosh. Brick. Bricks. Oh, I'm brick. totally losing my mind. They're nice people. I've been <laughs> to their shop in Chic or like warehouse office in Chicago. They make chrome plated Legos. Yeah. So what we can just do is run, we've done before, run our nylon tape from a Arduino or in this case microbit to one of those bricks. And now that brick or any other bricks connected to it that are also chrome, since chrome is conductive, become a touch point. Mm -hmm. Or we could do like any, really anything conductive. We could do a ball of Play Doh. We could do a cup of water, even would work because a lot of capacitiveness in that. Oh. It really, anything metal or conductive in general, um, the more mass I find, them, like especially wet mass, the better. So like a ball of conductive Play-Doh works really well or like a big pancake of Play-Doh. Um, we also have used bare conductive paint works really well. Um, although it takes a while to dry, it's like a puffy paint. You can get a pretty good surface area covering of that. Um, Circuit Scribe ink might work if you do a big area, but I just like using just like some cheapo aluminum ductwork tape because you just get a big old like yeah. two inch two inch wide strip put it down and then just run our tape over the top of it and now you have a big area of of that so anyway this is just a really easy way of doing a button press so here's a cool thing too with capacitive touch as well you don't actually have to we, i don't know about this guy because we haven't gotten too far in the weeds with it yeah. but we have found with typically with capacitive touch you don't actually have to touch the capacitive touch point to activate it. So you can put a sheet of paper over this. Actually, here, let's find out. Paper, yeah. so we have paper. paper right what am I doing? I, I got paper. Here, let's just try it out. Is it working? Yep, it's Does working. Work? We can't see it, so, I believe. You. Yeah, so I'm going I'm to do this. I'm going to hold this up. I'm going to put a sheet of paper over the top. Yeah. You can see I'm, Josh is not lying. Heart. Oh, shoot, my camera died on me. <laughs> uh, keep, keep talking. Why don't we keep talking? Oh no, it's the above, it's our software. Oh no, our software just kind of freaked out for a second there, Pete. Um, front's, back? front's back again. Right. Or, sorry, ab above heads up, above, you turn the front off. Anyway, sorry, this is why I had Pete around. So flip that front on, If is it? Oh, there we go, there's me, I'm back. Can you focus, hey, focus me, Pete, focus me. Oh, focus. That's why I had Pete around, he's so handy at focusing. There we go. I think our software Ooh. just kind of hiccuped. Well, there. So one of the cool things to do with capacitive touch is you can put things over the top of your capacitive touch point and still activate it through there, like a piece yeah. of paper or, as we're going to show you, vinyl. If you have like a vinyl cutter, you can make yeah. a nice little um, mask over there. So we're going to show a video clip of our sound wall, which is up here behind me on in our hallway. It's going to be moved to our much bigger hallway where it's being built down there. Sure. Uh, but where we have uh, gone out from one of our uh, Crazy Circuits invention boards, which is just a, a teensy LC on a Lego breakout board that has um, 11 capacitive touch points on there so we could activate um, an mp3 player module to play mp3 so that's what you're seeing happen we're just really it's touching a, a vinyl cutout we've got conductive tape behind there it's acting as a button press to then play an mp3 file which is one of the things that would be perfect for halloween you touch a doorknob and oh scary sound effect happens because the doorknob is metal so pete roll that clip i'm gonna roll it here let's see wow. if this
There we All go. Right. Uh-huh. Hey. That's so, what that looks like. so yeah. Uh, so that's what we did with that capacitive touch uh, input because that board has uh, eleven capacitive touch points, which we could use. Now, microbit has up to four. Zero, one, two, and this touch point, which you could totally, if you wanted to, run some of our conductive tape from here oh. off to something else. But we're, our plan is to um, make a small version of that sound wall using that same MP3 module because we've gotten it to work within the microbit MS Make code. In fact, we use that for the HAL 9000 project that we did mm. in our Kickstarter video. Um, we're just we're pressing a button that's playing a, a quote from 2001 Space Odyssey. Um, and we're just going to do the same thing here, but with a micro bit and much less touch points because we only have up to four to use. Uh, but I mean, same exact setup, same exact, exact same, th- same thing, just with a micro bit, which is kind of a cool project to do because, again, kids could use all sorts of things to activate that touch point. Um, heck, you could just run alligator clips from a lot of people. You don't need to use our, our board if you're just going to do some funky stuff. You could just alligator clip over from zero, one, and two. And then, actually, you'd have no other points to use, would you? <laughs> you could do a single, <laughs> yeah. if you want to, say, make a scary, like a scary sound effect thing, what you could do is um, not use zero because that's hooked up to the piezo speaker. You could say alligator clip over to pin number one or two with the capacitive touch aspect and then, say, to a doorknob or something else that somebody might touch with their, with their body. And then when somebody touches it, you could have, like, a spooky sound effect play with the piezo speaker on here. Or a lighty sound effect happen, or light, light effect sound effect happen with just a simple touch. Um, or you could do, I guess, one and two to do two piano keys, I suppose. Um. <laughs> Josh, I have a bit of a code here. Oh, there's the code. So That's what we're this get isn't that. the code running, but what this, th- what these are, the um, so you can do it in your loop in the forever loop. There's a little thing you can, some logic say if you know the pin is pressed. And then there's also these what are called event handlers, these things down below. So th- what they do is they run all the time, not just at a certain part in your loop, in your forever loop. So like it can, you can change this from pin zero, one, or two, and they also have a special one for the logo. So you know while your code is running, it'll just always look for those presses on the uh, capacitive touch there and, and do something about it. So it's pretty easy to use. Yeah, and that's the nice part about it with the capacitive touch and the MS Make code, like it's really simple to implement, no more difficult than implementing a button press like we have yeah. here on the buttons. So essentially the micro bit, heck, if you want to even just do this, you can just hold the micro bit and you have one, two, three, four, five, six buttons technically on that you could press, although these are, the tactile buttons are great for doing doing things. These are kind mm-hmm. of touch and then away. Now, Pete, you had mentioned that these things were more like touch and release, not on touch. Well, so I did know, yeah, I, I just did up some code real quick. I noticed they do have the press and release function. So I haven't uh, haven't experimented much with those. I just okay. used the press thing. So we'll have to figure out exactly the interactivity with those. But it's a really nice little add-on feature. Yeah. And like seriously, I kid you not, if you just want to go from like one of these boards to a ball of aluminum foil, that is a great touch point to use. Yeah. It's a big, nice, round thing kids can, can touch. Anything chrome... Um, aluminum and I like that aluminum ductwork tape is a really cheap thing to get because it's nice and wide. It sticks to stuff like especially cardboard. You want to make a cardboard like two key piano. Mm-hmm. There you go because pin zero is hooked up piezo speaker. You have to use pin zero for sound, um, which is why yeah we're going to also show you down here if you don't have a version two. Here is version one. We're going to take this guy out. So goodbye version two and version one point five, which is also programmed because you have a bunch of these around. You can still do some basic capacitive touch, right, Pete? <laughs> yes. There we go. Yes. So we can do the same thing here. It, I, Josh, I should warn you, it works better with a USB cable. Oh. Uh, it works a little more uh, reliably. I'll oh, with say. USB as opposed to external it does, power? just because I think it's looking for a, a more solid ground. I've had it work with both. All right, we're going to... It works a little better, it seems. Try it out. There we go. That was pretty easy. easier, yeah. There we go. You have three because you don't have a... Yeah. thing but no, no, no. so pete do you want to show the code you use to uh to do this on the version 1.5 yeah i don't have that handy but yeah sure <laughs> oh anyway basically that what we're doing is um the the built-in way is the resistive touch where you have to touch ground and one of those pins those three pins work as analog pins so they're what what's called floating they always have a value between 0 and 1023 so that value kind of floats around maybe like you know 200 or something but if you touch it 
that value will jump up to maybe four or five hundred, six hundred. So we just put in a number, I think three hundred in our code, and if you touch it, that value goes up, and then we trigger it. So it's, there we go. you know, it is Pete, the what? poor man's capacitor it touch. Is the poor man. It <laughs> is that's exactly right. And uh, I mean, actually, that's what people do with uh, did with regular Arduinos to get them yeah. to um, have like very simple capacitive touch. Uh, basically, the same approach before people had um, like had that built into some different of the Arduino clones, like mm -hmm. the Teensy Duino. We use the Teensy LC a lot. It's a great little board, pretty inexpensive with a lot of capacitive touch points built in. But if you have just an Arduino Uno, like, I really want to have like one capacitive touch point, you could do something very similar with that with just yeah. a little bit of work. I think um, you had to tie two pins together. Ah, uh, yes. Was like it would take the value between them. Yeah, it's and, a little and, trick thing. And there's a, there's a lot of good write-ups on that, yeah. but not from us. But Pete, <laughs> is there, of which, is there a write-up on the poor man's capacitive touch on our website? Um, so yeah, we have a, uh, a uh, project called Capacitive Touch under our microbit section. And I'll probably update it a little with some new stuff that we've learned, but uh, yeah, it is in there. Okay, good. So if you want to do this, and the stuff for the, by the way, version 2 comes out in middle of November. Um, we're going to have it available with our, with our Bitboard Kickstarter. But version 2 will be coming out in November, so until then, you can't really use version 2 for anything. But we have one. This is our little... You can get excited about it and You can, you can be it. all hyped up for it. Like Jim and his pie love, if he's out there. Jim. Jim gives you 123 points, Josh. Ah, uh, I need those points. points. I yep. need those. Um, my, my soccer skills aren't good anymore. That's a lot of points. <laughs> uh, or hockey. I imagine. Anyway, okay. but so this, uh, if you have a, a, an older microbit, I guess the current one out there, hey, microbit, you know, this is a very simple way with version uh, 1.5. Mm -hmm. Version 2 makes it a little bit easier, just yay, but you can still do it with the older version. Uh, but when this comes out, I'm sure people are going to do a lot of fun capacitive touch projects with yeah. it because cap touch is one of those things that it's just, it's super, super, super handy once you get an idea of like, oh, shoot, I don't need to be tied to a physical button anymore. Yeah. Um, I mean, even for like our paper circuits stuff we do, we physically make a button out of paper to press it to complete a circuit. With this, I mean, it's just you just, any random thing that's conductive can be a capacitive touch point. Or with like our sound wall, we can run a piece of conductive tape like three, four feet across the wall, no issue. If I look behind me, it's all, all back here. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, even further if you want it to be a touch point, it's really, really simple to do. So you can have your micro bit across the room and your doorknob, a window, uh, you know, a random thing you have, yeah. uh, a sports memorabilia trophy or something. Like, oh, I don't touch my trophy, people. Uh, now, I keep joking that the Microbit version 2 is going to be the best kid alarm, or sorry, uh, uh, security system, mm -hmm. because of all the nice built-ins. Because you could use capacitive touch to your doorknob so that if somebody touches your doorknob, uh, the alarm goes off. You could have it, like, flash, flash lights. The sound starts going really loudly. Yeah. You can have you got the accelerometer, so if your door moves at all, like oh, they're gonna put a glove on, or you know, a, you know, an oven mitt to touch your door. Oh, well, the accelerometer, oh, it's moved. It's gonna that's gonna happen to it. It's got a built-in light sensor, so oh, they turn that light on, you know, because they come through your closet or something. Um, Josh, it even has a radio, so it can tell at your second micro bit someone's in your room. See, yes, you could totally do that. So, like, if you had two micro bits, the first micro bit's just your whole sensor suite. Yeah. And the other micro bit's the, like, the alarm. Like, oh, no, Pete's touching my cookie stash. Ooh, wow. Ooh, there's a Pete in the cookie jar again. Ah, Pete's in the cookie jar. Actually, more like Andy in the cookie jar. Yeah, I bring the cookie. He brings the cookie. Andy, Andy and I the eat them. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I mean... It's really fun to do. So you could totally do so many weird things with a micro bit as a little sensor suite. Um, even the microphone, like, oh, if the sound goes above a certain point in the room, um, like Mission Impossible, you get like the uh, the original one with, with Tom Cruise. <laughs> kind of, the original. Kind of, kind of quiet there. The original one, yeah. You know, um, so there's a lot of fun sensors and whatnot on this little guy now. So a little, little doodad. So, uh, yay for the Microbit Foundation for updating yeah. it. Thanks, guys, for sending us one, too, if you're out there. Thanks, Katie, from the Microbit right. Foundation. We appreciate it. Brown Dog appreciates you. But, hey, on that fun note, we will be carrying these. We have classroom sets and curriculum. We are writing right now for our Bitboard setup for our wonderful Crazy Circus Bitboard, which is the best way to hook up Lego and Microbit together and to do Microbit in a breadboard-friendly situation without a yeah. breadboard. The Bitboard, now on Kickstarter. Can, can you remove that 
Bitboard? Have people seen the bottom? Is the bottom going to look like that? Or? No, the bottom's going to look slightly different Very because this is one of our like final stage prototypes. We're yeah. going to add some silk screen down on the back of our board. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty flat. We got a little bit of uh, a few things through hole soldered on there because I don't trust surface mount solder for some yeah. things when they're being abused Agreed. by children. Um, <laughs> but we have a little bit of information up here, like a, a little, I think it's three or four different warnings, like warning, only do like these things, warning three volt only, I forget. Yeah. But it's basically a little bit of like, can I put five volts in? Nope, three volt only. Do that, yeah. Basically little like reminders, because quite frankly, no one's gonna be looking at the back of this ever. <laughs> um, but it's handy if you're like, oh, I've lost the little direction sheet for it on the back yeah. of our board exactly. um so yeah we'll have these guys oddly enough mid to late november in time for when these guys come out yeah. and we're shipping all those together for the holidays so if you want to back us on kickstarter or order through our website because they all got the same time yeah uh we're pretty darn sure these are going to show up by christmas time unless something really 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 weird happens huh. our, our our crazy circuits factory we use for all this stuff that we're the PCB factory does a really good job. They're pretty consistent in time. The only thing we can look in, like, figure would be that uh, if we had any weird customs issues, because you never know. Yeah. Or these days, it's more likely shipping issues yeah. from China to the U.S. due to all the weirdness in shipping things. Yeah, we just have, uh, yeah. it's been a pain yeah, for everybody yeah, yeah. who does stuff. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, these will be ready, and we really expect these, especially here in the U.S. We're only really shipping to a, like the U.S. and Canada, and a couple other select countries. Um, U.S. and Canada, pretty much, unless something super, super weird happens, Christmas time, uh, though we'll, people have these. So if you want to get this with a micro bit, version two, yeah. um, I mean, provide like, another thing too, like unless we somehow can't get these uh, for some weird reason, but we're working to make sure we get uh, a couple hundred in because we have, currently have like a hundred. 80 backers on our Kickstarter campaign. It's yeah, not a gigantic. So. We've done like $16,000, which is well above our $2,000 goal. Yeah. But I mean, getting a couple hundred micro bits in shouldn't be too big of a deal unless there's a massive run on these. Right. But we're hoping we can make sure we get those in. So on that fun note, and if somebody has any questions or Jim wants to talk about pi more, Jim. <laughs> oh, you're out there, Jim. Uh, let, it, let us know, but we'll be... I'm trying to take points. Oh, Jim. <laughs> I like that like four, four picture Facebook profile picture. Right. Like... Like, He's, yeah. Like, got the mask and the impressive facial hair going on, <laughs> like which you can't see with a mask on. Our, our yeah, landlord, we're talking with him yeah. today. He's just like, I'm wearing this mask, and we can see my awesome mustache. I'm like, and you work so hard on it too. <laughs> Sorry, right. Scott. Um, Brown Dog Gadgets. Brown Dog Place for mustache talk and this. Also, don't use copper foil tape. Use our maker tape. Also, just in the case best. you need this. <laughs> so he just makes up graphics about things we talk about frequently in live streaming because we tend to. Do enough of these with enough different places these it's days. It's just a handy reminder. Positive it is. Negative right there. True. Don't be negative. Be All positive. Right. But on that note, we'll be back tomorrow with a couple other little micro bitty fun things that we're going to show off. Because we've covered so far microphone, piezo speaker, capacitive touch, um, which doesn't leave a whole lot left on new features for this guy. Um, and I think that's all the big ones. Uh, Bluetooth 5.0. <laughs> it's got more RAM, more memory on it, which yeah. it's a project for children. Some kids go well beyond. Some some adult engineers that's been reading all the microbit forums have been complaining about uh, oh. the lack of certain high end features of the microbit. I'm like, guys, if you want high end features of microbit, get yourself an Adafruit Clue, which yeah. is just the super like the max you could ever upgrade yeah. a microbit to, in the same form factor that works with same accessories with a really great color screen on it for like twice the cost. Thanks, Adafruit, you made like the nicer version for those people who complain about. The kids, the kids programming project. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have a built-in IR camera. What, what were they thinking? I don't know. But what else was on there? Ooh. Does it have a humidity sensor? I think it was. Uh, no, there are a couple like weird, like oh, wireless, wireless. Is I to make an IoT device? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> the fact you can have two microbits talk to each other Bluetooth-wise, yeah. like for instance, I see a lot of people will, will make a like a little rover or something, like a, a little two servo or two motor controlled uh, little rover. And they use a second micro bit to, and the accelerometer and the buttons to control it. So you can turn left, turn right, but one yeah. button makes it go forward, one button. I mean, it's really simple that they, and they talked to us in Bluetooth wise, you don't need to have wireless on it. Mm -hmm. It's a project for kids. And there's, mm. if you want that, there's other things that do that really well at a similar price point. 
Yeah, it's, I mean, again, it, it, excel, it excels in, I think, again, learning, education, fun projects. The price point, and, you can't beat yeah. that. Like that $15, $16 price point for one of these. Yeah. I mean, yes, you can buy a Raspberry Pi Zero for a wireless for, oh, thanks, Pete, other, for like $10. But then again, if he was mentioning like, yeah, you can buy it, but you have to get all these accessories as well. And you have to have a purpose for it that you can do high end, yeah. like a full computer. Yeah. Sometimes you just, sometimes you just need a little, a little micro bit to get you through the day and make a thing blink. Yeah. You just, you just, just there need to blink. Um, yeah. But anywho, long story short, we'll be here tomorrow talking about some things, I suppose. We've got a week left on our Kickstarter. We should maybe, you know, get a couple, couple, couple thousand more. more for our little bit board buddies here. Look at them little. Yeah. Look how, look how nice it is. This is just so green. It's so nice. Look at the copper. Beautiful. It it is so nice. I mean, look at it. We've got built in power pin headers. We've got got a relay on there. Actually, we're talking about building a little hovercraft today using using this um, to to do a couple things with it. So we might sometime somewhere down the line make a hovercraft. One yeah, day, Pete. Like, one day we'll make a hovercraft. Yeah. And we can. And, and if you people watching have ideas, let us know what you want to see us build. We'll we'll build it probably. Actually, I really do love suggestions from from yeah. the few viewers currently still watching as we talk about other random things. Sixteen. What movie have you seen lately? Uh, uh, no. Um, if you have some suggestions for projects, like, hey guys, I'm trying to do this thing. Seriously, throw it our way because we get a lot of good suggestions from teachers, parents at home, librarians who are trying to do like certain types of projects. Um, and we'll throw on our list of things to do because we, we really do like to uh, to make up random projects just for the fun of it sometimes and having suggestions really is helpful. That's why I really had fun with the Kickstarter campaign because we could just do some really weird like fun Lego projects that we normally wouldn't do but we wanted to have some, some showy off things and sure, why not? But they're nice because we can show off some of the capabilities you can do with the micro bit that you normally wouldn't think of like capacitive touch or running a DC motor with a relay or doing some fun stuff with servos or neopixels mm -hmm. with the micro bit. Just how far you can take this very simple little little guy here um, and just expand those capabilities. Like doing the hovercraft, we're just like, oh, how would we do that? We have a built-in relay on here. We can totally do that. It's it's yeah. not that tough. And so we might build a little hovercraft so people can want to make their own hovercraft that can kind of slightly zoom around. We'll do that with a micro bit because why not? Or I guess like little little cars or whatnot are really easy. We can also easy. make a boat if they ever fill in that uh, pond behind us. We have construction going on in our building. We have construction going on like the the empty lot across the way and they're, they're building like a pond or something so if they fill it up we actually built a little boat yeah. with a micro bit a little rc boat you know we're gonna do we go nikola tesla route that's what tesla did Ooh. he showed off early on like he, people thought it was yeah, like look it's magic i can this little tiny little little um little electric powered like little tiny boat but he was really it was all radio it was a remote controlled boat Ooh. and he would yell commands at it and so another guy like <laughs> over on the corner over there had like a little control box go left and right. And people are like, whoa, it's voice control. He's like, haha, it's radio. I am Tesla. I am electrical magic. <laughs> He's, uh, that's but, that, but seriously, that's and what he did then. We can do with a micro bit now yeah. for approximately like 30 bucks for two micro bits and then some other parts. Um, I imagine empty soda bottles for pontoons, sure. a piece of laser cut wood because we got a bunch back there. And yeah. A DC motor to make it go forward, yeah. like so. It's it's surprisingly easy to do these days with your micro bit. They can you use your micro bit for something else when you're done. You got it. Oh, of course, you would need your bit board so you can run the relay, right, Pete? The yes. Bit, have bit the board. Bit board, yeah. bit board from Brown Dog Gadgets. Why? Because it's pretty cool. It hooks up to Lego, and you know you want one, people. That's true. I know Jim wants one. I can tell by that look on his uh, his face on there, and that the. Jim made a mistake of commenting on our video. We're just Damn. like, Jim! 123 points. Oh, Jim, I hope you come back. Please do. <laughs> but anyway, if anybody, including Jim, has questions, let us know. Um, and if you have any project ideas, throw them our way, because we did, seriously, we look at other people doing projects, like, you know what, that's cool, but maybe we could do a couple tweaks and make it a little better, yeah. or they're running into problems. So we do try to like look at instructables and what, like, how can we do that a little bit better, a little more classroom friendly? Um, so we, we do try to... Again, put resources out there for people to use. And all the stuff on our website's free. It's always up there. You don't have to use a, buy our stuff, but you can just, our directions, our code are there. And it makes Pete happy when people use his code. You got it. And every time someone uses his code, Pete, Pete gains like a sparkle in his eye. You got it. Uh, something like that. Uh, uh, Pete gets his wings. Okay. Anyway, on that, we're, I'm, we're done for the day. It's Thursday. <laughs> I'm done. Everyone, goodbye. All right, bye. See you Friday. Bye. Thanks for watching. 
please visit browndoggadgets.com for parts, projects, and curriculum. Follow us on social media at Brown Dog Gadgets. Check out our live streams at Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. We'll see you next time.